I was thinking about reflecting in between the last Mass and this Mass. Uh, first of all, I want to say, you know, a lot of kids, they don't even have a father at home. That grieves me. That, that hurts my heart right there. But uh, growing up, you know, we, we could hear that statement. I don't know if you ever heard it. Uh, I didn't because I was so angelic. But <laughs> <laughs> Wait till your father gets home. And sadly, I think that's the way that a lot of us, even sitting in the pews, feel about God. That God's some like, great adventure that's ready to punish you because you haven't crossed your T's and dotted your I's. And uh, even in confession, you know, I think the older way people were taught to confess was like, I said a bad word 23 times, I missed two masses, I, you know, lusted 18 times, and this and that, right? And so it's important to be able to state our sins, but it became so much the focus on the sin instead of the Father, so much the focus on the human being instead of our God. And guess what? We got it wrong. There's so many. I bet you if we knew, you know, what it really was, we'd be run into it. Don't you think people will be filled our churches and confessionals? That grace? But I think a lot of us, we just, uh, we settled. And we're kind of up here, really topical, topically and superficially, but we haven't gone deep with our God. And uh, that's called anthropomorphism. That's making God in our image. So, like we have a father who's mean, or wait till your father gets home, he's going to straighten you out. I mean, yes, God needs to straighten us out, but not out of fear, but out of love, and he does that in a very tender way, in a real way, in a loving way. But Blaise Pascal says this, God created us in uh, his image, and we return the favor. So we make God to be out in our image. That's wrong, brothers and sisters. We've got to get God to speak to us so God can show us who God is. And uh, we come before Him that way. That's why I'm really trying to have some adoration before Mass. Because I think uh, we've got some idolatries going on. I know I'm an idolater. I worship false gods. I worship the God of talking sometimes. Talk, talk, talk. You know. How could God ever speak? How could you ever find out who Jesus is? If we're speaking all the time. It's my job to do what I can in my power to get you to heaven, right? And so that's why we're doing that, so that we'll stop talking and to be able to receive Christ. I think this is the most important question in the Gospels. Jesus says to his apostles, He says, Who do the crowd say that I am? John the Baptist, Elijah, one of the prophets. But who do you say that I am? Who do you say that he is? So, for your homework, for your playwork, Go home. Pray about that. Write it down. Is he the great avenger? Is he the judge? Is he counting up your sins? And they're getting so heavy and so ominous on us, we're just drowning in our you know, sinfulness and our humanity. That's wrong. That's not who our God is. And I think we're just on the surface. We're just scratching the surface. And God is this. So much for us. He's so good. He loves you so deeply. And He wants to speak to that to you in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why He sent Christ. So that we can know God as God is. But the only way that you know who Jesus is is He's got to tell you. And He can't tell you if you're talking. So He invites us to understand God, who God is, based on God, not our projections. Oh, this is my father, this is my mother, thus, that's who God is. That's wrong, it's limited, it's shallow, and it's got to change. Amen? Amen. So, we come before him, and I, I would always say this. I would say this. Think about the most loving person in your life. That might be the person to your right or your left. Uh, or it might be uh, you know, someone in your family, someone who's not here today, an absentee. And think about that person. If you had the choice to spend time with that person each day or to spend time with Jesus, who would you spend it with? And if we choose that person, we're right all over it, aren't we? We're choosing a human being over our Savior and our God. And I'm not saying, you know, it's got to be one or the other. You know, it's got to be God or no one else or no one else but God. But just to think about that in terms of your priority. 
Idolatry is putting anyone in the place of God. And that could be your spouse, and that's wrong. Because your spouse, I'm sorry, can't save you. You need the Savior's love to help experience that salvation in your marriage, but your spouse can't do that. That's idolatry. I think we have the idolatry of other people in our lives. And I think we have the idolatry of talking. And being so talking and talking that the Father can't get through to us. Who do you say Jesus is to, to, to get together, to first maybe pray about it, and then get together with family members and say, this is who I say Jesus is. Because he's told me, he's, he's corrected me, he's shown me. A couple things I just want to say on who I say Jesus is. He's loving. He's obviously loving. And what, what we should get out of every prayer time, the key to every prayer time, is to feel the Father's love. To feel how much God loves you. That's the heart of prayer. And when love comes in, it shows us what love is, and it shows us what love isn't. So if we're listening to God, God's going to say, you know what, this is sin in your life. This needs to go. It has nothing to do with me. And I want to take authority over that. And I want this non-love out of your life. I want you to go confession to Father John. I want you to get rid of this. I want you to deal with it. Because I want you to know my love. And I want my love to come in there and blow out all the sin and the darkness so that you can see the glory of God that we're called to. This is God, the living God. So, God... And his love for us. He's very loving. And God has forgiven me. He has forgiven me millions and millions of times. You know what our Pope said recently? He was, I'm full of sin. That's someone who lets the Father's love into his heart. This is the Pope. This is the man that's leading the church. The vicar of Christ on the church of earth, he said that. And you know what? He's not saying that just to get it, you know, somebody's attention. I think he's saying that honestly. Because he knows. He's listened to him. He also said this at the beginning of his pontificate. Jesus never tires of forgiving us. We should neither tire of asking for forgiveness. When's the last time that you've asked forgiveness for someone? You haven't done that. Are we even in the game, brothers and sisters? Are we even in the ball? Our God is loving and forgiving. And our God is Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I was reflecting on the Trinity this last week. And the Trinity is without separation and without imperfection. Trinity is perfect and one. Perfect. And that's what we're called to. That kind of unity and that kind of love. We read about that in the second reading that Paul's preaching on. Brothers and sisters, you are one, you're children. And, uh, united as one in Jesus Christ. Think about how good that is. No separation and no imperfection. That's called heaven. And that's often now. As we open our hearts to that. To think about that. So what do you think of when you go, wait till your father gets home? What do you pray about? Are you an idolater? Are you making a person out to be God? Are you making out an experience to be God? You know, the Father was mean to me, so God the Father was mean, he's unfair. Are you making talking out to be God? Are we letting the Father into our hearts? Brothers and sisters, wait till the Father gets home in our hearts. Wait till we become one.